it is about to go down because it is the week 10 recap here on the audible that's right the footballguys.com podcast cecil lammy sigmund bloom going beyond the box score in 34 17 is colts and titans from thursday night we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about 10 and 7 browns over the texans 10 to 7 is the final score and uh, there's some exciting things bloom yeah, right Right. Maybe not <laughs> on the Texans side, really. Farrell Brown gets the only touchdown from Deshaun Watson. Duke Johnson Jr. gets to start, and it's 14 to 54. Uh, 14 carries, 54 yards on the ground, 3.9 a carry. Okay. No catches for Duke Johnson. So that's something. Will Fuller gets five for 38. Brandon Cooks gets six for 39. Randall Cobb gets three for 41. But when you're thinking, hey, the Texans can do something and put up a little fight against the Browns, nope, that's not the case. So as we get later into the year in fantasy football, uh, wind situations, weather situations come up more often, and there were a few of them today. There was the Steelers and the Bengals. Uh, there was the Browns and the Texans. Uh, there, Of course, there was the, the Packers and the Jags. And you want to react, but you don't want to overreact. So, you know, we'll get to this, but maybe if you benched Aaron Rodgers or uh, Ben Roethlisberger for, say, Carson Wentz, you felt like you overreact. But if you benched Deshaun Watson... You react appropriately in this one. And maybe we've seen now as Cleveland has played two of these win games a couple weeks ago, remember, against the Raiders. It was also a game where the passing games did almost nothing. Uh, and the running game didn't do much here. Actually, Duke Johnson ran pretty hard. And with David Johnson going on IR for a concussion, never like to hear that. Uh, Duke Johnson has some sort of lasting value. Uh, but if it's like this game, because he wasn't involved in the passing game, it's not much. Uh, you saw Miles Garrett introduce himself to Deshaun Watson a few times. He's just a... See, how often can we say a number one overall pick is hitting his best case scenario? You know, mm -hmm. this is about right. as good as Miles Garrett could be, and he was a number one overall pick who had all this untapped potential. Um, Pharaoh Brown, you know, one point, Oregon, interesting prospect. Hey, that's about all that we can say and see other thing we can say here is with bill o'brien gone the dysfunction has not stopped in houston uh you can look up the personnel move that jack easterby made uh not liked by most anybody the explanation was not a good explanation and you know this team it's not as simple as getting rid of bill o'brien and i think when they face bill o'brien's old team new england next week that will probably be even more apparent even more apparent and on the flip side of things, we got to see Nick Chubb back and Chubb's one of those guys, best running back in the league. And if he's out there, you start him and he comes through as an RB1, 19 for 126 and one touchdown. You're thinking Kareem Hunt will have flex appeal. Well, plenty of flex appeal, three for 28 as a receiver, but 19 for 104 as a runner, long carry of 19. So it's not like he ripped off a big 59 yarder like Chubb. That was a you know consistent effort from Kareem Hunt all game long. And because of that, Baker Mayfield didn't do anything. 132 yards passing. Rashard Higgins, the leading receiver, three for 48. Jarvis Landry, three for 29. Um, Austin Hooper, Hayes out there, one for 11. So they didn't really need to do much to get this win other than hand off to Chubb and Hunt. And when they have Chubb back, see, you know, they're playing these wind games. Can you picture somewhere there's a giant wind machine and that old Browns gremlin is running it? Because it's perfect for them with Nick Chubb back for the game to hinge on the ground game. And it was great to see Chubb out there because Chubb's one of those running backs in the mold of, say, Frank Gore or Marshawn Lynch, where even if there wasn't something like football, he'd be trying to run into stuff and knock it over, you know, just show what he can do. And Chubb could have had two touchdowns. This one goes out of bounds at the one yard line to clinch the win. He watched Atlanta, Detroit. He knew that, I mean, he could have scored the touchdown and Houston wasn't scoring 10 points, 14 points in 52 seconds. So if you lose this week and Chubb was in your lineup, um, maybe you can kind of curse him for being a smart football player. Austin Hooper didn't do much. It wasn't much there. Again, it was going to be a running game based game, which is the recipe for this Browns team. Uh, but Hooper without Beckham, it's not really there. Clean. Cease. We can really say this. We're not getting ahead of ourselves. They're playoff contenders. For real, like, playoff contenders. Hey, Jared. Welcome, new addition to Jared's life and family. Uh, hey, Hannah. Um, and they go Philadelphia next week. Another game. Let's keep this thing going. Let's <laughs> keep it up. Let's yeah. keep it up. Okay. I'm waiting. Waiting on that uh, New Orleans Wi-Fi girl. 
Uh, okay, let's move on to the next game. And it's the Giants 27, the Eagles 17. Okay, here's some offense. Not on the Eagles side, really. Carson Wentz, 208 yards, no touchdowns, no INTs. It's important. Boston Scott gets a rushing touchdown and three for 63 on the ground. Also a catch for 11 yards. Uh, Corey Clement gets a rushing touchdown. Miles Sanders is out there, 15 for 85 from Sanders. Also two for 10 as a receiver. Richard Rodgers gets four for 60. Jalen Rager, four for 47. Uh, Greg Ward, five for 39. Dallas Goddard, four for 33. Aww. Travis Fulgham, one for eight. And then a return of Alshon Jeffrey saw one target, no catches, no yards. So here you go, Philadelphia. You drop one and don't look very good playing against the Giants. No. I think we can say definitively, Cecil, in the Super Bowl era, there has not been a worse division than the 2020 NFC East. It's horrible. And remember, if the Giants had been able to close out the first game against the Eagles, they'd be in first place. Or if they could have closed out the game against Dallas. If Washington could have closed out games against the Giants, they'd be in first place. Uh, if Carson Wentz was a better quarterback, Philly would be in first place. The story here was, okay, Rager's back, Goddard's back, Sanders is back. This is going to be the Eagles offense we were hoping to see. No. And in fact, without those guys, a uh, few weeks back, three weeks ago, uh, Wentz, with Boston Scott's help, led a great comeback and made us feel better about this team. And this was going to be the no more excuses game. Um, so you know, from a fantasy standpoint, Sanders looks great. Sanders looks so good. I mean, he's so elusive. He's so fast. He's so strong. Uh, they've got a really good lead running back there, although it was Corey Clement vaulting a touchdown and then Boston Scott getting the long touchdown. We finally found Travis Fulgham's kryptonite cease, James Bradbury. Uh, so, you know, if you had anticipated that, you maybe you went with Rager, not that he did anything. And actually, Richard Rodgers outscored Dallas Goddard. But Goddard did enough that, you know, in this season, you'll take what you got from him today but Eagles fans, Cease, I guess it's kind of more of a Thursday night thing. But, I mean, it, how many more games like this do we say it is Wentz? It was Wentz. It wasn't what Wentz had to overcome. It was Wentz all along. I guess in contract terms it doesn't matter. But as an Eagles fan for the future of your franchise, it absolutely matters. It absolutely matters if you're the Giants because Daniel Jones is out there running like a madman. Uh, nine for 64 and a rushing touchdown, including that big 34 yarder from Daniel Jones. He went 21 to 28 passing, 244 yards, no TDs, no INTs. Wayne Gallman, four games in a row of scoring and two. He doubled up today just for good measure 18 for 53 and two touchdowns for Gallman, also a catch for seven yards. Darius Slayton, five for 93. Sterling Shepard, six for 47. Golden Tate said, I'm sorry. And he got two catches for 44 yards. Evan Ingram got two catches for 15 yards. So you pound the rock on the ground. 36 carries, three rushing touchdowns. That's the way to win. It is an identity. Uh, Jason Garrett, baby steps. You know, maybe by the time all of these players get to the end of their contracts, Garrett will figure out what he can do with them. In this case, it was Daniel Jones. And we had that big run by Daniel Jones against the Eagles. The first time around, he had another big run in this one for a touchdown, a couple other runs uh, in the red zone. And what you see is the light bulb, the aha, eureka moment. Daniel Jones is big and he's fast. And if you use him as a runner on purpose, not just when he's running for his life, scrambling, you can create advantages for your running game. Uh, and passing game wise, well, we saw Darius Slayton bounce back. He made a, a big play to help them clinch this game. Uh, not as much. Of course, you're going to get Sterling Shepard with his short catches, helping you out in PPR as a high floor play. Golden Tate was back out there. Evan Ingram, Garrett still hasn't quite mastered yet what to do with the tremendous athlete who can line up in the slot like Evan Ingram, but baby steps, baby steps, a win. Baby steps. Uh, Wayne Gallman, now with Devontae Freeman on IR. He had one beautiful touchdown. We see the goal line dive over the top, but a corkscrew? Some style points there. And then another one he bulldozes in. So you really like seeing that. Alfred Morris put on a clinic with patience in his running. Also, who needs uh, Devontae Freeman here? This team's going into their bye, and they're a contender in their division because, hey, if you can win like two or three games for the rest of the season you can probably win the NFC East. The Lions won today, 30-27, to 27, the final score over Washington's football team. And Alex Smith went nuts, 38-55, to 55, 390 yards, no touchdowns, no INTs. It was Antonio Gibson with 13 for 45 and two rushing touchdowns, which certainly helped the day with four for 20 as a receiver. 
Terry McLaurin, quarterback proof, seven for 95. There you go. Logan Thomas, four for 66. Isaiah Wright, six for 59. And nobody started him. Cam Sims, we did talk about, four for 54 today. Steven Sims, five for 46. There's those seven catches from J.D. McKissick. That's right. J.D. McKissick, which uh, with a rushing touchdown, and then also eight carries for six yards, but it's seven for 43 as receiver that they were most focused on so some movement some action some fantasy assets just not a win for washington and it could have been a much easier win for detroit but detroit actually they led 24-3 in this one alex smith leads them all the way back a few opportunities left on the table early alex smith misses jd mckissick for what could have been a long touchdown easy play uh also you had a dustin hopkins miss as smith did scratch and claw and bring them all the way back and you like him as a two quarterback league super flex play holding him down the stretch because he's just going to keep throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing moving around okay he's not alex smith pre-injury but you're also not afraid to watch him uh when you get 55 attempts though you're going to get a like you said a great game out of mclaurin who also had a nice play on end around um and logan thomas hey you'll take that uh isaiah wright Sims, the Sims brothers, uh, not really, but uh, Cam Sims, Steven Sims. Um, it's the Detroit defense. I guess if we're going to take anything out of this, it is play offenses against Detroit defense. Now, next week, it's Carolina. So we've got to wait and see how Teddy's doing. Mm. Uh, your prayer candle there. Uh, Antonio Gibson, not a tremendous day as a runner, but got the two short touchdowns and four receptions. Actually had a really good day in a PPR league. And it's, again, Alex Smith keeping this offense viable, at least against defenses like Detroit. And uh, Antonio Gibson getting those calls at the goal line. McKissick also got one. Like we said, McKissick, he's uh, a running back too. Washington, you're still alive in this battle and facing the Bengals next week. So, you know, this was a game I think that you, they looked at on the surface. Because, Cease, you saw how they stacked the schedule. The early games were the bad games of little consequence. And this was not supposed to be a good game. And when it was 24-3, Detroit you said, yep, not a good game. And then Detroit said, no. Even though it's a game of no consequence, let's make it entertaining. Let's make it entertaining. Speaking of entertaining, DeAndre Swift is just fun to watch. He was in college. That's why he's my number one running back because he's so natural, so instinctive, so fluid with his movements. And 16 for 81 on the ground. Not yet his breakout game. 16 for 81 on the ground. But DeAndre Swift had 5 for 68 and a receiving touchdown. So you started him. You love that. Marvin's Jones Jr., 8 for 96 <laughs> and a touchdown. I'm so happy that makes you laugh. Yeah. Marvin Hall with the big play, the 55-yarder down the sideline, two for 61 and a touchdown there. TJ Hawkinson, two for 13. Aw. Dammy Amendola, three for 10. Eh. Uh, so it was the Swift show with a dash of Jones and a little bit of Hall thrown in to get that win. Uh, 276, by the way, for Matthew Stafford. Always makes me laugh, See, you know, it's like, Remember when they found that guy who was a radio announcer that was homeless? You know, it's like, you've yes. listened to the hits on 66. It's like 20 years from now, see, so you'll be somewhere with the sign. And they'll come and say, he said, it's the Detroit Lions receivers are Marvin Jones Jr. and damn me. And don't look, that's Cecil Lammy. He used to be a <laughs> great podcast. That's how you'll be able to know it's Cecil and not some facsimile. Uh, mm -hmm. Just ask him to name the Lions receivers. Ask Mar Matthew Stafford to name them without Kenny Galladay. He had a really good day. And Washington's pass defense was good on paper, but I don't think any of us would say they were a good pass defense. They have a good pass rush. And you saw Matthew Stafford take advantage. He is getting x-rays on his thumb after this one. So watch that. We may see T Chase Daniels. He's just in time for Thanksgiving, like a week and a half away. Um, so we'll see if we will see Matthew Stafford next week and beyond. With that, um, DeAndre Swift gets the call as the starter. And this is why you check Twitter. In the last like 30 minutes up to game time, Tom Pelissero actually reported that pretty close to the game. So if you're on the fence about Swift or you're like, yeah, I'm change up some of my DFS lineups, throw a little more Swift in there, you were rewarded. And you just see the fresh legs. You just see that he's giving this offense something that none of the other running backs, including Carryon Johnson, pour one out for him. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr., with the good game, of course, uh, the touchdown, a lot of good possession receiver type catches for Matthew Stafford. And then that means no TJ Hawkinson. Like you said, Marvin Hall got a long touchdown here. Hawkinson comes up uh, snake eyes for the first time for us here. But again, it's because of Jones, because of Swift, uh, because of Hall. And I guess Detroit is sort of still alive. Uh, next week, they play Carolina. I guess we can consider that like a true elimination game. Uh, Detroit wins the ones they're supposed to win, but still, may I remind you, they're still the Lions, and it's never going to be easy.
It's still going to Lions. Lions are going to be the Lions. The Jaguars are going to be the Jaguars. 24 to 20, the final score. The Green Bay Packers get that easy one over the Jaguars. Jake Lutton, uh, 169 yards, touchdown, and a pick in this one. You saw him firing some deep shots in this contest, trying to hit DJ Chark, 4 for 56. Keelan Cole, 5 for 47, and a touchdown there. Chris Conley, 4 for 43. Tyler Eifert, two for 15. James Robinson, 23 for 109. So, right. and two for three as a receiver. Uh, so, he's like the running back version of Terry McLaurin, where he's quarterback proof. And, uh, well, Jaguars do what they can, Bloom, on defense and special teams and offense, just falling short. They made a game out of it. They had chances. They really had chances. And with Luton, um, the wind betrayed him. There was one point when DJ Chark was open downfield, but they were going against the wind. Isn't that a Bob Seger song? Against yes. the wind. Uh, and it hangs up in the air. It's broken up. So Chark, if you started him, it wasn't a terrible result, and there was more there. Keelan Cole, you didn't start him. Uh, he had a short touchdown here. And then that punt return, and you see the wind the other direction because the punt just goes and goes and goes, and Keelan Cole catches it with, like, 20 yards runway to build up before anyone's around him and he takes it back to the house love seeing keelan cole too in these things undrafted free agent as he goes into his contract year and then james robinson and he's just full out you know he's playing his own game with his own agenda whatever else is going on this weekend at bernie's franchise and it's a reminder to play your running backs against green bay uh, by the way jacksonville's going to play pittsburgh next week support jake luton because what you saw from luton is if there's pressure oh man he just can't hand, he just he's not equipped see it's like he's on stilts or something like he right. can't actually maneuver mm -hmm. to get away from pressure you feel bad for him uh and that's why he's you know backup quarterback maybe uh but against Steelers ooh not you don't want to be exposed to pressure uh and again Green Bay James Robinson play your running backs against Green Bay but see it's Indianapolis next week so play nine minds I don't know uh, that Green Bay eek out that Shouldn't have been so hard. Mm, let's talk about Aaron Rodgers getting 325 yards, passing two touchdowns, one INT, and Marcus Valdez Scantling. It's all about windows and wins an MBS window. Who the hell knows? But yeah. four for 149 and a touch today, the big 78 yarder. So there's there's a window if you forgot or thought you were starting somebody else and had him in. Then congrats to you. Yeah, Devontae Adams in. He gets eight for 66 and a touch. Stop complaining. Aaron Jones, 13 for 46 in this day. By the way, Aaron Rodgers with the rushing touchdown. Aaron Jones also had five for 49 as a receiver. Robert Tunyon, like Funyon, says three for 33. Uh, Jamal Williams, eight for 30 on the ground, and then three for 25 as a receiver. So here we go. Packers get the win a little closer, a little yeah. closer, but uh, still at hand. And the MBS thing, it's going to be very interesting on the waiver wire show, Bloom, because there's um, fool's gold. And then right. there's real gold, and I think MBS is more of the former rather than the latter. Yeah, we'll see. Um, certainly, uh, yeah, I was going to make a joke there, see, about like real Wisconsin cheddar cheese and like American cheese or something, but I couldn't formulate it in my mind fast enough. <laughs> government knew, cheese and then have, like real Wisconsin cheese, right? Right, right, right. But government cheese is really good on tacos, on breakfast tacos. Anyway, Aaron Rodgers is windproof. Someone said it. it, it someone said it in the chat room. Um, it just. And again, it was with the wind, the long touchdown to Marcus Valdez-Scantling, like a 73-yarder. Uh, actually, Jamal Williams played about as well as Aaron Jones, at least as a runner. And there was a touchdown drive that was mostly Jamal Williams. So kind of, sort of a committee here. Uh, Aaron Jones does enough as a receiver to make it worth your while. Something to watch there. Uh, Devontae Adams had a touchdown taken off the board. He had an ankle injury that sidelined him for a few plays. He had a fumble. He also had a touchdown on C.J. Henderson. So you'll take that. You know, this is where we're at with Devontae Adams. Aw, he only got 20 points? Well, I guess that's okay. What does Green Bay do against the Colts? A defense team, a physical team, a team you know, we'll see maybe getting their bearings, as you mentioned at the top of the show, with a 34-17 win over Tennessee. So that's certainly an intriguing matchup as we see – Green Bay sometimes look good against good teams, look bad against good teams, look bad but good enough against a bad team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, next game up is Buccaneers and Panthers. are wondering how the Buccaneers are going to bounce back 
46 to 23. <laughs> so you're not playing the Saints. You're going to drop a 40 burger on Carolina. Oh, Teddy. We'll get to that in a little bit. Let's talk about Tommy Brady. 341, three touchdowns, no INTs. The touchdowns go like this Mike Evans, six for 77 and a touch. Could have been another one, by the way. Rob Gronkowski, two for 51 and a touch. Cameron Bray, three, three for 31 and a beautiful catch for his touchdown chris godwin gets six for 92 to lead the team there's antonio brown with seven for 69 okay ronald jones 23 for 192 and a touchdown there you go tom brady with the rushing touchdown too by the way and leonard fournette how how did he do eight for 19 on the ground and two for 11 as a receiver so there you have it go back to ronald jones feed him feed all those receivers and tight ends and Things look pretty good for everyone on Tampa, except for Leonard Fournette. Yeah, and again, you know, we'll see if Matthew Stafford will be ready for the game against his Carolina defense because they were just run ragged. Know this, uh, Ryan Suckup had, I think, three field goals of under 30 yards, so three red zone field goals, I think three goal to goal, goal to go or close field goals, or they could have been in the 50s easily in this one as you feel some frustration, get some frustration taken out. <laughs> what happened against those Saints? Um, you had uh, Ronald Jones, 98-yard touchdown. I think the fourth run in NFL history of 98 yards or more. Remember Dorsett and Derrick Henry, the only ones with 99. Uh, you see those afterburners. We hadn't seen them yet really in the NFL. And he still has the same afterburners from USC, but with that rocked-up, contact-ready body. So, yeah, I think we're starting to get close to settling this. Uh, which Tampa Bay wide receiver should you play? All of them. They were all good for PPR leagues. There was maybe even more there. Uh, again, if they weren't stalling out in the red zone, even if you played Rob Gronkowski. And Gronkowski had one of those catches downfield, massive. Someone tries a little defensive back, tries to kind of climb on him to bring him down. He looked like good old Gronk in this one. And Bray looked very skilled, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And again, Carolina's defense we're looking at is uh, you know, punching some holes. There are some leaks there. Cease, not very many holes in the Rams defense today. That's who Tampa gets next week. That is going to be one to watch. That is going to be an incredible matchup of epic proportions Oh, Teddy. We love Teddy. Yeah. Uh, give us the latest there. Gets a couple touchdowns before he's out. And here comes P.J. Walker. Uh, you know, who's got some skill? And, and Teddy also had a rushing touchdown. D.J. Moore with a receiving touchdown. Four for 96 on that one. Uh, Colin Thompson gets a touchdown there as well. Nobody started him. You started Curtis Samuel, maybe. Deep flex. What the heck flex? Three for eight. All right. Three for four as a runner. Three for eight as a receiver. You started Mike Davis. Hey, we've seen him without Christian McCaffrey. It's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> not, not this time. Seven for 32 on the ground for Mike Davis, and then four for 12 as a receiver. Robbie Anderson, four for 21. So some of the normal right. like assets that you would turn to didn't come through. And oh, yeah, then there's the Teddy update. Uh, knee. Um, they don't think it's serious. They haven't even ruled him out for next week yet. So... We'll go from there. I hope we get to see him play again this year. I hope we don't have to watch P.J. Walker uh, or Will Greer, for that matter, because if you have Robbie Anderson, you have even D.J. Moore after this good game. Busted coverage helped you out here. Uh, Curtis Samuel, who was coming on. Christian McCaffrey or Mike, really. You need Teddy Bridgewater to be the quarterback for the rest of the year. Uh, as you said, Tampa, 13 for 13 start for Teddy. And this looks like it was going to be a back-and-forth, high-scoring game. And then things started to really slow down for this offense. And it wasn't slowing down for the Bucks' offense. Um, he also had, by the way, Jason Pierre-Paul had an interception in this one. Like 10 yards downfield. Like he was a linebacker dropping into coverage. So in a fireworks accident or not, you love that. You love seeing JPP. He had a sack and interception here. And, and Teddy was valiant. You know, for fantasy, he was good. He had those two pass touchdowns early. He had a rushing touchdown where he just... Barely was off the ground as he extended the ball, uh, but it's just not even close to enough. And I think that's kind of where we're at with Carolina, because what do we have in this one? Their fourth fake punt of the season. See, what reason is there ever to run four fake punts in a season <laughs> and one the week after you ran one? You know, like that's the week they're going to be expecting it. Come on, Matt Rule, going forward on fourth down, doing some things. So you like that, you know, is he in it? His blood's flowing. But this team is, just can't consistently compete every week. They've had really close games against some teams that will make the playoffs this year. They maybe even beaten a playoff team or two. Remember, they took Kansas City close. The Vegas game was close. Um, I mean, they they've took New Orleans close. 
But that's where they're at. They're close. And then as the season goes on, maybe they get a little farther away and a little bit of a breather against Detroit next week as they try to keep their season alive. Uh, but we may not see Teddy out there. Hey, uh, okay. Watch out. Yeah, <laughs> Here we Miami. go. Yeah, watch out. Well, it's not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Oh, okay. Yet. Almost, almost. Miami and Los Angeles. 29-21 is the final score of those Dolphins. To uh, huh? We'll be talking about him in just a little bit. But let's talk about Justin Herbert, who's you know showing some skill today. wasn't a great day for him. Uh, he's just not winning. Twenty to thirty-two, one hundred eighty-seven yards, two touchdowns, one ints. Anthony Lynn is fantastic, but this is kind of who he is. So when you know does this team think about replacing him? By the way, Justin Herbert with a rushing touchdown, which helps his day. Keenan Allen three for thirty-nine and a touch. Hunter Henry four for thirty and a touch. Mike Williams two for thirty-eight. Kalen Balaj, 5 for 34 as a receiver, and then 18 for 68 as a runner. So clearly, that's their guy they trust. Joshua Kelly, 7 for 21 in this contest. Not much else for uh, Jalen Guyton, 4 for 24. Nobody started him. But, okay, Chargers, you, you know, you show some stuff again, uh, but you're not getting those Ws at the end. Right, and now they're not looking like a good team. I mean, they often win, well, I mean, lose while they still look like a bad team. They didn't look like a good team in this one. But Justin Herbert still had a good fantasy day. You can count on that. Not a great fantasy day, but not one that made you regret. Starting them against a Miami defense, it's good defense. You know, We saw Kyler Murray have success against them, but that's just a regular feature of watching football in the year 2020. Uh, Justin Herbert, mm, not as effective. Uh, so you know, here's the kind of day it was, right? Keenan Allen had a touchdown. Xavier Howard slapped it out of his hand that would have been a fumble through the end zone right at the plane. I mean, if, if it was just six inches shorter, it would have been a fumble through the end zone. You know, uh, Hunter Henry had a touchdown. Justin Herbert had to hold on to the ball forever. He could have ran it in. So you finally got your Hunter Henry touchdown. Not much else. Not much else if you had Mike Williams, who, again, Xavier Howard was doing some work there. And then the other thing here is Kalen Balaj. They like him. And Cease, I saw evidence that Kalen Balaj's eyes work, that they can work in concert with his body. Uh-oh. I know. So, you know, I mean, maybe they found something here. Playing against his old team, Miami, uh, his receptions really bulked up his fantasy day for PPR leagues. But you wonder now, going forward, you know, get the Jets next week. Another one of Kalen Balaj. It's the Kalen Balaj revenge tour. Uh, you know, this feels like a third-tier team now, not down in the Jets' basement, but also not a team that's knocking on the door of the playoffs despite all those close losses. That's how they felt today as we'll continue to watch Justin Herbert. He was the second-best rookie quarterback on the field today. Mm, Bellage revenge game. Devontae Booker looks at that and says, hmm, Jet nice man. try, kid. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the Dolphins' side before the rant. Tua Tonga Vailoa, 15 of 25, 169 yards, two touchdowns, no INTs. The touchdowns to Jakeem Grant. We talked about him. I think what the heck, Flex Bloom? Uh, oh, yeah. Four for 43 for the tiny Texas Tech Red Raider. Also had that touchdown there. Durham Smythe, two for nine, and his touchdown. You thought, okay, no Preston Williams, more Devontae Parker. No, two for 31. No Preston Williams, more Mike Jacecki. No, two for 40. More Salvin Ahmed, 21 for 85, and one rushing touchdown on the day. Also a catch for five yards. Uh, Patrick Laird with two for 19. But uh, I mean, that's what they did. They just ran the ball 32 times. They played efficient uh, in their passing game and really didn't have to, you know, go to Parker much, even though he was targeted seven times, only two catches. Jacecki targeted five times, only two catches. Grant was targeted five times, had four catches and that touchdown. But it's a winning combination, Bloom. And yeah. in the end, that W is all that matters. Yeah, it's a winning formula. If there's something to take out of this is they're ahead of schedule. They're looking like a playoff team. And we'll talk about how maybe even a playoff team that hosts a playoff game. Uh, wow. This is a recipe, right? You've got Tua Tungavailoa, mistake-free football, and showing some of that rookie magic, like uh, Justin Herbert getting out of uh, pressure, You know, showing some mobility, making some throws here. As we said, as Cecil laid out, it's not great for Devontae Parker, who did have a tremendous one-handed touchdown catch that didn't count. Not great for Mike Kosicki. You saw him doing some things downfield. Jakeem Gratt did get a touchdown here. In the backfield, not DeAndre Washington, despite what he did. Not DeAndre Washington, despite them trading for him at the goal uh, goal line, at the trade deadline, similar. Um, 
but uh, Devontae Parker had an onside kick recovery. We get any points for that? That's kind of an important play, I guess. I don't know. Um, but you saw in the backfield Salvon Ahmed. And see, first of all, this is kind of like when you run into your ex and you're both with new people, you're like, I'm not just doing fine. I'm doing better than you, right? Because there's Balage, <laughs> right? Balage is running pretty well, and Miami just basically showed him the door. And they got someone that the 49ers are developing, Ahmed, and you just see the juice in his legs that you, you didn't see. It's Husky on Husky Crimes. He's with Miles Gaskin. Gaskin is dependable and competent, but Ahmed showed that burst, and we knew it from his measurables, uh, a little bit of a raw runner, but also the Dolphins' offensive line, uh, you know, opening up holes. And this running game, see, so I think it locks into that mentality. We're a defense team. We're a running game team. We're going to not give the other team anything easy and it is a winning formula and it shouldn't be a winning formula next week against those denver broncos hey, hey, hey there we have it denver broncos and the las vegas raiders which are up next 37 to 12 the final score oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy bloom i think i need to pause to take a little bit of a drink yeah. of water yeah yeah but your whistle I, uh, if I uh, wet my whistle and I get ready for this uh, this tirade, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> See, you're like my trainer in the corner, right? Yeah, I'm remember rocky. keep your watch get out for ready. the left. Yeah, right. Work right. the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <sighs> I'm so dehydrated, Bloom. You know what That's I good. should do? What's that? I should shotgun this bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> come on come on broncos that's what you get that's what you get when you go on the road to a divisional opponent this is the effort that you have all the drew lock apologists stop you sound ridiculous it takes more time the offensive line is terrible Shermer's a moron you guys sound ridiculous now, are there some truths to those statements? Does Pat Shermer need to be better? Sure. Although this is gaining more and more towards being on lock than it is on Shermer. Is the offensive line in shambles? Yes. When Garrett Bowles is your best player on the offensive line, that's a problem for you. Uh, you know, will it take time? Of course. So the Broncos have the time. Not really. I mean, unless you're just throwing this entire season away and thinking that in 2021, you'll just rinse repeat with this entire thing. Tom McMahon, special teams coach, and I, you know, I don't ever ask for someone to be fired, but I mean, just please, it, it would do him some good, right? I mean, he wouldn't be putting that film out there every single week on one of the worst special teams units in the league. Ed Donatel has been down with COVID for like three games. Like Vic Fangio, do what Mac Nagy did. Give up your play calling. Start concentrating on the actual offense because this offense is trash. And Drew Locke, there's going to be days like this. There are. But when you are throwing three picks, and yes, I tweeted it out and got such a response, Bloom, on <laughs> Twitter, on social networking, <laughs> because I had tweeted out a picture of Drew Locke smiling when he's getting blown out. Him and Melvin Gordon were kidding around, and I couldn't even believe my eyes because I was like, wait a second, is that Aaron Brooks? Oh, no, it's Drew Locke smiling when you're getting curb stomped, when you're getting clown hammered when you're getting absolutely embarrassed by a divisional opponent. This is absolutely unacceptable. This is not Broncos football. Not at all. Not in the le least way possible is this Broncos football. I've been around him since the days of Mike Shanahan. And this is a team that has great pride, great tradition, great winning efforts, and they've got none of that. I got a question. Would, the, would Vic Fangio lose the team because he's keeping locking there? He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have a choice because this is a command from on high from John Elway to keep locking right. there. He doesn't have a choice because Brett Rippon's a backup. Come on, dude. He doesn't have a choice because this whole year was supposed to be about Drew Locke's progress, and it's been nothing but regression. Why? Because Vic Fangio didn't like Rich Gangarello. You want the truth? Can you handle the truth? Because that's what the truth is. Your head coach didn't like your offensive coordinator. Probably personally, although that's just an assumption by me. To be clear. But when he can't even use his regular name, the offensive coach, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the offensive coach was better than the one you've got now. You can't keep getting retread after retread after retread. Hey, who's a terrible head coach who gets another shot? 
Let's grab him as an offensive coordinator. That <laughs> doesn't work. You have to have innovation. You have to work to your quarterback strengths. There is some talent there with Drew Luck. You'd never see it. You see it like twice a game. So, you know, again, Luck apologists, stop. You sound ridiculous. Honestly, you sound moronic. If you are a Luck hater, you kind of got to stop too, although you got a little more ground to stand on after a four interception performance. Speaking of people they don't like, does this yeah. team and this staff not like Philip Lindsay? Because it's either one of two things, and we can boil this down because we're humans and we have brains. All right. Now the PR spin may be different. Oh, everybody, everybody loves loves Phil. We love Phil. No, no, no. The spin on it doesn't matter. What matters is the truth. And there's one of two things that's going on with Philip Lindsay. Either the staff doesn't like him, or he's hurt more than we think. I don't know what it is. But it's one of those two things. Because Melvin Gordon, yeah, he had a better game today. Whatever. Anyone excited by Melvin Gordon? Like, 11 for 46. Hey, guys, that's a really great game for the guy you paid $8 million a year to. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Royce Freeman could do what Melvin Gordon is doing. If Melvin And then Philip Lindsay <laughs> had as many carries as Drew Locke had interceptions. 257, one touchdown, four interceptions for Drew Locke, by the way. And Deshaun Hamilton gets the garbage time touchdown. Thank God they didn't come back in the fourth quarter and score like 21 points. Because <laughs> then people would be like, see, just you go, and you just play hurry up, and Shermer needs to unlock it. And, no, no, no. Scrap it all. Burn it to the ground. Start over. Actually rebuild. Don't try to compete and rebuild at the same time. Can't ride two horses, one ass, Sugar Plum. Mm. Jerry Judy, four for 68 on eight targets. Um, he looks really frustrated. Again, I haven't talked to Judy this isn't me, inside information. There is no Lassie Bark here. Again, adult, eyes, look. Jerry Judy looks pissed. He looks frustrated. Why? Because he's never lost this much, ever. He's lost more games now in his Broncos career than he did for his entire career at Alabama. Tim Patrick, fine, four for 61. That's fine. He's a nice guy, whatever. KJ Hamler's doing a little more. Okay, four for 50, so let's keep an eye on that. And wh whatever's whatever about Deshaun. Uh, Noah Fant, three for 18. Speaking of frustrated, on seven targets. So you have Locke smiling when you're getting clown hammered. And I don't like that. I don't care if it's for half a second. I don't care if he's just joking around. I don't care about any of that, okay? I don't want that for my quarterback. That's Aaron Brooks. I don't want that, okay? Now, what can you do going forward? That's the question. But we're here to recap this wonderful sure. game against the Raiders, Bloom, and I think I got some water down my nose. Yeah, Cease, how would you be able to tell if Fangio lost the team? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a danger. I mean, <laughs> that's all I ever say. Drew Locke, I just, he lacks feel. The game is not speaking to him. He His radio is picking up static. And that's why garbage time, you can feed fantasy teams the garbage time, but not a team. And eventually it runs out. Eventually the air's out of the balloon. And that was it, basically. You know, Judy and Patrick and Hamler did something for PPR leagues. Like you said, it was Ham Hamilton getting the touchdown. Fant, frustrating, frustrating for him, frustrating to play him. It's just Denver. This is not a trustworthy offense. There will be maybe some spikes. They've been kind of random because they were based on Locke playing so badly that he was playing prevent defenses in the fourth quarter. And I'm just sorry. I'm sorry that you have to cover this team, but I think you're finding a way to keep yourself interested, Cecil, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> Let's talk about those Raiders and Derek Carr showing that progress. I think it's the, what's unlocked is the three years in the same offense, Bloom, but also... I think it's the fact they're letting him run, or he's mm -hmm. kind of got that, you know, card, that free pass, what have you. Like, oh, just go ahead and run. He's throwing with touch. I uh, fed Henry Ruggs a little bit more, kind of. I mean, there was a little more success. Three for 31, still not enough. Darren Waller, five targets, three for 37. So you, you go to the Raiders, hey, they scored 37 points. What a great day. Yeah, for Josh Jacobs, 21 yeah. for 112 and two touchdowns. And for Devontae Booker, 16 for 81 and two rushing touchdowns. There's your narrative street. Uh, you know, Hunter Renfro, two for 30, Brian Edwards, one for 16. I just not much there. It was all about running the ball. And then late, it was all about running the ball with your former player who hates you. Yeah. <laughs> and he showed it and he got that extra touchdown at the end there. I think sometimes there's uh, maybe some encouragement. Uh, Josh Jacobs looked good. So he still got a lot left in his tank. And it isn't so much that Jacobs isn't looking good as much as Booker's playing the best football of his career, so he is that high-value injury handcuff. But also, in these blowout-type games, 
yeah, Booker is going to have some what the heck flex value, not anything in the passing game, as you pointed out. Now, if you did start Carr or Darren Waller, know that Darren Waller was open for like a 60, 70 yard touchdown, just dropped it. Just dropped it. So we'd be talking about Waller a little differently, be talking about Carr a little differently. And it is Denver. You know, it wasn't Ruggs, it wasn't Aguilar. Aguilar had almost touchdown too. Uh, Denver can have those breakdowns. Remember that, Miami next week. Maybe that's Jakeem Grant's music or Mike Kosicki or somebody. Uh, and for Vegas, you know, again, Vegas and the Browns. These are fun stories. These are teams that are on schedule. Uh, I think maybe even the Browns case a little ahead of schedule with their rebuilds. Hey, Broncos, take note. You got to commit. You got to have clarity. You got to have alignment. Uh, and remember where this started, Cease. Remember when we said, hey, Maybe the Raiders do have something this year. It was whenever they went to Kansas City. Guess who's coming to Vegas next week? Kansas City. Mm-hmm. That's right. By the way, Jason wants me to do it uh, better yeah, if you likes. did it as Coach Mangio. And he also wants some more likes. Uh, so how about this? The one thing about Drew Locke is he throws picks every day. <laughs> That's my horrible Vic Fangio impression. Uh, let's talk <laughs> Bills. Across. By the way, the only bad thing about the rant, the only bad thing, Bloom, yeah. Besides potentially getting removed from Rockers TV. Uh yeah. the only the bad thing about the rant is that my energy, like I save it and then it's like so I'm like force but lightning. Exciting, exciting Bills and Cardinals. Bills and Cardinals exciting. 32 30 final score. Cardinals win. Not Josh Allen making that comeback. 284, two touchdown, two INTs. Isaiah McKenzie with a touchdown pass there as well. Cole Beasley, 11 for 109 and a touch. Stephon Diggs, 10 for 93 and a touch. Smoke, 6 for 72. Okay, still using them, still using them. Still not much there for the tight ends. Dawson Knox, 2 for 16. Josh Allen leads the way on the ground, 7 for 38. So you're like, okay, I'm getting rid of that Devin Singletary guy. I'm going to go with Zach Moss. Hey, it's 7 for 20. Uh, okay, this was mostly about Josh Allen, a dash of Isaiah McKenzie passing, but the Bills fall short in their comeback bid for a spectacular reason, Bloom, which we'll get to in just a right, little bit. Right, right. You can't really fault the Bills for this one. This is just a great game. The, 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 I know there's an F for the Bills. You feel bad for the Bills with their franchise history taking the loss on this one. And the Dolphins are gaining ground on them. The Dolphins are saying, hey, we aren't just satisfied to have a winning record. We aren't just satisfied to make the playoffs. We want the division. If it's not the Patriots division, it could be our division. And, you know, for the for the Bills, um, remember, Miami beat Arizona just last week in a similar thriller of a game. And I see, again, let's circle these young quarterback matchups. Because this one, at the end, you needed a cigarette. It was good, exciting, rise to the occasion football. And Josh Allen did that. He did it as a receiver. And he did it as a passer. Uh, not the most precise. However, you've got guys like John Brown who got hurt in this one. Uh, again, you know, Josh Allen with John Brown, Josh Allen without John Brown. So watch that. Let's see about the severity of the injury. Cole Beasley looking great. Stephon Diggs looking great. The running game, not looking great. Not looking great at all. So you know, we see the vacillations of this offense against the Patriots. The running game carries them. Uh, it can be clunky when they lose with Josh Allen. Allen can also carry them. We kind of saw both sides of Josh Allen, but he put together a terrific drive, a terrific pass to Stephon Diggs, who made a terrific catch with 34 seconds left to put them up four points. So, you know, you needed a touchdown here, and you felt like, hey, you know, this is uh, th th this is going to be a stirring win. This is going to be a kind of win that shows that Josh Allen can still give them that we're in the game as long as we have him feeling. Uh, now, good news for Buffalo going into their bye, so they get to get rested, lick their wounds. They get the Chargers, San Francisco, uh, but they still have to face Pittsburgh, Denver, New England, and Miami. Uh, they finish up the season with Miami, so we'll see what happens. Miami's remaining schedule, uh, they actually will get Denver, Jets, Cincinnati, Kansas City, New England, Vegas, and then finishing Buffalo, so maybe that Kansas City game is one that's going to help Buffalo there, but uh, you can't say any of this is on Josh Allen. Josh Allen did what he needed to do in this matchup. It just happened that Arizona made a trade in the offseason, and it's a trade that led to a memory that we all will have for the rest of our lives. Yes, instant classic, as our man Jason in the chat room says. And thank you, Bill O'Brien, you moron. I, it's not personal. <laughs> decision was moronic, right? 
right. my grandmother would be so disappointed in me. She'd be like, no, see, so you just say that's their way. Yeah. You don't hate anybody. No. Except I hate Bill O'Brien. Yeah. Cardinals <laughs> are a team that, wow, Kyler Murray, they say he did that, right? Kyler Murray, 245 yards, one touchdown, one INT, the one when it counts. Seven for 127 to New Hopkins. That touchdown. Oh, the end zone. Let's see if he can get a couple throws. And nope, it just takes one. They get it. Kenyon Drake back, 16 for 100. By the way, Kyler Murray, two rushing touchdowns, 11 for 61 on the ground. Chase Edmonds, eight for 56. And then three for 21. So PPR leagues, you know, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Christian Kirk, four for 27. So a letdown to people who flexed him out there as well. This was a lot of Kyler running, a lot of running just in general, Bloom, and then Kyler at the end to put him over the top. Yeah, we really might be looking at, uh, for Murray, the greatest fantasy season as a runner by a quarterback. He it just looks like, and see, I don't think the most optimistic projection of Kyler Murray as a runner in the NFL would have been like this. Because he, it's not just that he's gaining yards. They're not getting a hand on him. They're not getting a hand on him in the red zone when the defense and the offense are compacted into these small areas. And as a passer, not as much today, uh, but he made the throw when he needed to. Let's talk about the running game really fast. Kenyon Drake comes back, and he's not just running it up the gut for one yard. He's finding holes. Chase Edmonds is finding holes. So all of a sudden, now some of this is a reflection of Buffalo, so we'll keep this in mind. We'll watch their run defense to see if it's one that we want to target, but it's actually the running game that was doing really well here and not so much Kyler Murray as a passer, but again, when he's racking up these kind of numbers as a runner, it doesn't matter. So this last drive, they get the ball 34 seconds and he gets up around midfield ish with 20 or so seconds left. The next play takes like 10 seconds. You're thinking Kyler, I mean, this is like, Hey, it's only a second year. He just doesn't understand. Seconds are more important than yards. You know, you're down to 11 seconds now. Um, you're at midfield. And they weren't really set up for a Hail Mary on this play. I don't know what the play call was, but uh, Murray almost got sacked, escapes, and just loads up. And just the nature of watching an NFL game, the screen is only going to show you one part of the field. So when Murray throws, it's almost like he's throwing it blind, just getting it to the end zone because he knows now because he scrambled, this is the last play of the game. I don't know that, like you said, C side is like, let's get a little bit closer and then try Hail Mary. This wasn't even a Hail Mary. What this was, was De DeAndre Hopkins is in the end zone, and there's three Bills surrounding him. <laughs> I guess I'll try it because, and it's exactly the kind of peace of mind. Like, see, it's one of the things, you want to hear me go on a rant, like when a quarterback throws the ball away on fourth down. What are you doing? That's the one thing you know won't work. Kyler Murray said, I've got to try. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins just levitated and... He had the last laugh on Tredavious White and cradled the ball as he goes to the ground. And it's funny, Cease, when DeAndre Hopkins pops up after he makes plays like this, he's like the least surprised person on the planet. <laughs> you know? He's just like, what did you expect me to do? Do you know who I am? We all know who you are, Nuke. And I think that if you were lucky enough to be watching at that moment, you felt all the hairs stand up on your body. You know, you felt like an electricity and energy flow through you that only f flows through you at moments like that. And whatever, and, and, and hey, look, Arizona plays Seattle, has a chance to sweep Seattle Thursday night. So they turn around. They don't even have much of a chance to like savor this. Uh, but now, because we're going to talk about Seattle, now Arizona, again, ahead of schedule, right? Oh, this year, Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury, maybe they can get over the hump and have a winning season. Maybe with seven playoff teams, they can make the playoffs. Nah. No. Nah. And remember, this NFC is wide open. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel if you're the Cardinals now with Kyler Murray, you know, with DeAndre Hopkins? Again, it's an invincibility when you feel like no matter what the score is, no matter what's going on in the game, if we got these guys, we're okay. Get the defense going. You saw the running game going. This is exciting. It's exciting, Arizona fans. Uh, can't wait to watch this team again on Thursday against Seattle. Can't wait because it goes bloom from, hey, you know, maybe they could make a run to maybe they could win it all. Yeah. That's the type of play, by the way, that catapults you. Yes. It's about this time of year, too, by the way. Yep. It's about this time of year, right? Remember when the Ravens got rid of Cam Cameron? Right. And all of a sudden, they start going, Joe Flacco gets unconscious. That type of play is the type of the play that ends with 
Kyler Murray holding the Super Bowl trophy. Yeah. Destiny. Yep. Bengals and Steelers. I watched the Cardinals beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Rematch. <laughs> Okay, it'll be 19 and 1 or whatever the number is. Don't make me do math. The Steelers are undefeated. 36 to 10. Remember when people said the Bengals would beat them? That was so cute. That was cute. That was interesting. Joe Burrow, love him to death. Uh, 213, one touchdown, no INTs, sacked four times, pressured all day. T. Higgins, seven for 115 and a touchdown. Tyler Boyd, six for 41. Auden Tate, two for 24. Oh. Then, okay, well, they don't have Joe Mixon. So it'll be Gio Bernard, eight for 30. Four for 17 as a receiver. Samaji P. Ryan led the way. Seven for 48. Motorboats can come back to you. Live it if it's meant to be. Let it go and it'll come back. AJ Green's not going anywhere. I mean, five targets, no catches. This is this is AJ. And I hate to see it, you know. It's like I love AJ Green, but this is kind of what he is right now. So let's talk about the Bengals bloom before we gloat about the Steelers. Yeah, and I think the Bengals winning against the Titans, you know, going to the bye, you got the Steelers on the side. Yeah, you know, upstarts, you're not there yet. And yes, the Steelers play down two opponents, but not as much at home, and certainly not when it's a divisional opponent. With like 10 straight wins against the Bengals, something like that. And yeah, Joe Burrow, now you understand. Uh, job one isn't making the playoffs, winning the division. Started to beat the Steelers. That's how you'll know when you're arriving. Uh, it was a windy day, too. Um, it was just rough. I, I think this was one of those ones, again, with the quarterbacks and the wind, maybe Roethlisberger, Rodgers, these are guys with games and experience for it to not affect them. Guys like Watson and Burrow, not as much. T. Higgins came through. There was one play when the Steelers just forgot he was an eligible receiver or thought he was on the sideline when the play started or something. That was about it. Um, you know, Giovanni Bernard, we'll see about Joe Mixon next week against Washington. Um, you did see Tyler Boyd at least get some catches. Um, but there's not much there against the Steelers when they're feeling like this, when the elements are also on their side. So, you know, again, Cincinnati, hey, they're facing a team that's contending to go to the playoffs, the Washington football team next week. Uh, and, and for the Steelers, seats, I'll just lead into you this way. The Steelers are 9 0, first 9 0 team in uh, history for the Steelers, you know. And you feel good? You feel like, like you said, gloating, but are you, are you really feeling that? Are you feeling at ease with this team? At least today they were trying to tell us, calm down, enjoy this. Yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy, and that's one thing for all Steelers fans out there. Like, enjoy this. It may not enter the Super Bowl. And yeah. God bless America. I hope it does. But. You know, just take time, enjoy the moment and what you're doing. And like I said, Bloom, I've I've said privately off the air, and I've I think I've said it on the air too. I'm just enjoying Ben Roethlisberger, yeah, because it's like this is it, you know. So it's like I'm just I'm drinking it in every time his face gets smashed in, and he's like, oh my neck and my back, and he's Ezel, and like yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just enjoying it. 333 yards, enjoying when he throws four touchdowns. Deontay Johnson, 6 for 116 and a touch. Juju Smith-Schuster, 9 for 77 and a touch. Chase Claypool is good at football. 4 for 56 and two touchdowns. Eric Ebron, 2 for 38. Nah. James Conner, fantasy GMs are like, huh, 13 for 36. And that was it. And then 2 for 12 as a receiver, but still. like, So the receivers got fed, mainly. Ebron, no. Conner, no. Ben, yes. And the Steelers get an easy win. I think Ben's knees are okay. I think they're fine. He and this he is what you get. to think about his knees. It yeah. could be my knees this week. I don't know. And see, in the whole arc of Ben Roethlisberger, is there a time that he's had three guys to throw to, like Juju Johnson and Claypool? Uh, you know, there were times. There was a time for a blink that he had like Bell, Brown, and Bryant. You know, mm -hmm. um, this he, he's got to love it, especially against a an inferior defense. It's not gonna be able to get pressure on him. So let's remember that. Um, it, again, all three, even more so than Tampa. Which Pittsburgh receiver this week? All of them. All of them. Chase Claypool, uh, two touchdowns. Deontay Johnson, he's good. It's easy for him to get open. Juju, he's still good. Juju's, he's like a young old player. You know, like he's young, he's like 23, but he has all those crafty moves. So skillful. Not so much Eric Ebron and not so much James Conner. Let's watch this one. Because Connor has never played a 16-game season as a starter under a heavy workload and not broken down. Maybe he's not injured, but we're waiting. When you win a blowout, that's good for the fantasy running back. Why wasn't it good today? The Bengals aren't that tough against the run. Uh, 
it makes sense for this team to just go through the wide receivers. You want to see the Steelers overachieve. Road game, Jacksonville next week. <laughs> There's your underachieving Steelers. As uh, you know, at least Jacksonville got there. We'll play spoiler and be plucky game out of the way. Uh, it's week 12, Cease. Thanksgiving night. Save a drumstick. Uh, Ravens, Steelers, round two. Ding, ding. Who was the third receiver with Plexico and Hines? In the day. Randall L. Was that Randall L, probably. Yeah. Randall L. Okay. And then Santonio. Yeah. Himes. And then Emmanuel Sanders. And Brown. Was there too. So, like, yeah. yeah. And Brown was a young guy on the come up. So, you know, it's, it's uh, been there. a luxury item <laughs> yeah. to be sure. Uh, and enjoy it because Juju's going to be gone next year. Anyway, uh, Saints 27, 49ers 13. These aren't the fantasy assets you're looking for. I mean, a couple of guys, Alvin Kamara, basically. Do we even have to do the 49ers? I mean, Brandon yeah. Ayuk, sure. Right. Seven for 75 in a touch for Ayuk. But, uh, and Jordan Reed, I guess. Maybe Desperation tight end, five for 62. Okay. Richie James, what a huge week. Three for 26. Jet McKinnon, he's going to get it all. 18 for 33. And, you know, Nick Mullins is showing that he's Nick Mullins. Uh, so the 49ers couldn't do much of anything against the Saints, who were just in cruise control. And not too much except jump out to like a 10 nothing lead, I think. I don't remember exactly, but for a little bit there, it was you know, the Saints doing the impression of the other black and gold team uh, playing down to an opponent. Uh, and then the defense said, we got this. We got this. We'll talk a little more about why the defense had to say, we got this. Uh, Mullins had a pretty good start. It was crisp running those Kyler, Kyler, Kyle Shanahan plays. Uh, still got Murray on the brain um, and looked good. Um, and then he crumbled and you did see again Ayuk even against these tough corners having a good game Jordan Reed had one of the plays of the day beautiful one-handed scoop catch and that was it and then not much Richie James had a, a fumble a punt hate seeing that as he was getting an extended opportunity here look this just isn't a competitive team and especially as we see them go through the rest of their NFC West schedule maybe they'll summon something up for their rivals but this is a second class team uh not going back to the Super Bowl, not going back to the playoffs. And the Saints need to they have that sweep of the Bucks, so they need to keep that lead intact, and all ties will go to them. Uh, and they may especially need that defense in upcoming weeks. He's... Bloom, neither one of us have pronounced chins. Uh, no. We have facial hair, so we have chins. Right. Uh, but our, uh, I, I got uh, our man Johnny Love. He didn't hang up on me today, but I got uh, our man Johnny Love's listening. He says, tell Sigmund to like chin distance away from the mic chin distance okay. you know, chin distance don't over modulate baby okay. it's all about good audio just listen to von miller's podcast it's awful <laughs> <laughs> you're on hardwood floors it's like all echoey you know like i did a show with brandon Stokely and some other guy like okay von all right work on your audio the saints uh, again bloom cruise control true brief 76 yards and a touchdown to Alvin Kamara, who had all the touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, one receiving touchdown, seven for 83 as a receiver, and then eight for 15 as a runner. Latavius Murray, nine for 57. I mean, just not a lot here. Michael Thomas, two for 27. Emmanuel Sanders, one for five. Jared Cook, nothing. Like, uh, And they win 27-13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Didn't have to do too much today. No, and it's Drew Brees going out with a rib injury. So we'll watch this one. Uh, Jameis Winston looked terrible. At first, you're like, are they letting him run the playbook? But then, like, don't let him run anything. Just, you know, take a knee and punt because the defense was playing so well and San Francisco's offense was not really threatening them. Uh, Alvin Kamara is threatening. I mean, when you look at a fantasy matchup and you see Alvin Kamara on the other side, you're like, oh, man, I'm going to need some good games out of my guys. Like you said, he got all three touchdowns. Tavius Murray looked good running, uh, wasn't able to score. Um, Michael Thomas, I mean, there was a couple of chances he had to get a touchdown pass from Jameis Winston. wasn't even in the same zip code. Um, and you know, similarly, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, the goose egg from Jared Cook, because it was the defense. Uh, even the Taysom Hill plays look shakier. And that's some, something else to think about, Cease. I mean, they gave Hill a two-year, $21 million extension. Now, that's not starting quarterback money, but that's starting money at every other position. I know he plays a lot of them. Maybe that kind of counts if you're part-time as a gunner and part-time as a tight end and part-time as a quarterback. And part -time, you know, he added all up, all those little slices. But why wasn't there more Taysom Hill? whenever Drew Brees went out. Uh, they run these plays very crisply. If anything, it puts more film down for defenses to prepare for actual passing plays with Taysom Hill. You see a little more of what Taysom Hill can do, knowing that you're going to have to plan for a future without Drew Brees. But see, I think the Saints and the Steelers, again, drawing that black and gold parallel, in denial about having to make a plan 
after the quarterback. No, we'll deal with that later. Uh, the defense was really, again, for the second straight week, who gave them the luxury of getting away with that this week. We'll see what they do against the Falcons, the hated Falcons. Yes, that rivalry is so awesome. Uh, Seahawks-Rams, kind of awesome. Not really today. 23-16, the final score. Final game we're going to talk about in the Week 10 preview here on the Audible. 23-16, Rams get the win. Russell Wilson doesn't get a touchdown. Couple, a couple of picks sacked six times. Say that three times fast or six times fast. Uh, Russell Wilson, 80 for 60 as a runner. So he's running around, running for his life. It was, uh, okay, you know, and the, the injury report bloom was so ridiculous. It's like, right. and uh, Carlos Hyde, maybe, and Chris Carson, maybe. No, 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 no nothing. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, okay, so it's uh, is it Travis Homer or is it DJ Dallas? Or is it Alex Collins? 11 for 43 and a rushing touchdown to be the leading rusher for running backs. Wilson was the leading runner with 60 yards on the ground. Tyler Lockett, 5 for 66. Freddie Swain, 3 for 37. Greg Olson, 2 for 33. DK Metcalf, 2 for 28. Ouchtown population, you bro, if you started most of your Seahawks. And for the first time, Russell Wilson mm -hmm. this year, first time this year. See, we see this in the divisional matchups that we know you, you ain't so big. Remember, they won four out of the last six against Russell Wilson, and the two they lost, they had chances to win. I see another one is like whenever someone from your hometown gets famous, you know, and everyone's like, oh, my God, he's the best. He's so awesome. You know him? Like, oh, let me tell you some stories. You know, yeah, they just they know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> good, good thing there's only 100 people in Grover, so. Yeah. So, you know, my point is just that the Rams are not, in, you know, let Russ cook. Oh, what, how are we going to handle Russ? The Rams don't care. Rams don't care. Nope. And they showed it by the way they played against him. They did not play in fear of Russell Wilson in this game. They played ready to poise on, uh, poise to strike on his mistakes, and strike did they. There was one play in the first half. Russell Wilson did one of those things. It was about the 25, 20-yard line of the Rams. And he he had a wide open field in front of him to where if he had run, if he could make one guy miss, he would have scored a touchdown. And instead he throws back across his body to the opposite end zone corner, thinks he has Will Disley, and instead he throws a pick, and a pick that was pretty easy uh, because he's Russell Wilson and he thinks he can do that. And that was the sign of the kind of day it was going to be for Russell Wilson. What you think you can do, not against the Rams, it's very interesting uh, for this team to really feel like they have unlocked how to neutralize Russell Wilson. Running game, like you said, it was Alex Collins with the touchdown. We'll see if we see Chris Carson Thursday night. Jalen Ramsey. And you think Jalen Ramsey gets up for playing DK Metcalf? Mm. I mean, the dude's the talk of the league. Twice in the last three weeks on the couch, I've said, what's the one thing you'll remember from this year? And they said DK Metcalf. That was before DeAndre Hopkins' catch. Uh, DK Metcalf. And Jalen Ramsey just blotted him out. Just blotted him out. Jacob Hollister hoping for some momentum after his week last week. No. Just not really momentum for this passing game. And now you see where are you as the Seahawks because you, if your offense is all you've got and your offense puts up 13 points, you are not in a good place. And we've seen the revolving Super Bowl favorite carousel in the NFC. Seattle, and again, if they lose to Arizona, you know we see how tightly packed these teams are. Now all of a sudden you're going on the road to open the playoffs and things like that. I know it's only week 10, but this was a game that showed Seattle maybe you aren't as far along as close to what your goals are as you thought. And for the Rams, remember last time we saw the Rams, Miami was toying with Jared Goff. Uh, instead, it was Jared Goff uh, doing the toying today. Mm -hmm. I love our man in the chat room, Unite Santini, because it makes me think of Jawas and Utini. Yeah. But also, he mentions when you cook, sometimes you get burnt. Yeah. Uh huh. So like oh, the, no. Russell, Russ, Russ can cook, right? But this yeah. was like uh, ramen and tater tot casserole because nothing was in the cupboards, no. right? So which I have had. Needs some Not more bad, cheese actually. on it. It's okay. It's all right. Underrated. Jared Goff, three hundred and two yards, no touchdowns, no ints in this one. There's Josh Reynolds leading the way, eight for ninety four. Tyler Higby, three for sixty. Okay. Cooper Cup, five for fifty. Robert Woods, five for thirty three. And you're thinking, oh, it's a Seattle defense, so it's going to be bonanza for everybody. Malcolm Brown, a couple of rushing touchdowns. 
33 yards on the ground. Daryl Henderson, 28 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown. Brown also a couple catches, 18 yards. Henderson a catch for five yards. Cam Akers leads the team in rushing for 38 yards. So here's that Rams running back by committee. But hey, Brown got those touchdowns at least. And Henderson got a touchdown at least. If you started him, you might have started Gerald Everett. And there's two for 27 because him and Higby, I just want them to be on separate teams balloon because yeah. I know they're really good. Yeah, exactly on that. And look, if you started Jared Goff, uh, put him in your DFS lineup good process it was just all the running back touchdowns and russell wilson didn't force them to open up the offense russell wilson didn't force jared goff to throw the ball 40 45 50 times because if he would have then the numbers might have been into that 400 500 yard range that we see goff get into so blame russell wilson blame the rams defense uh, backfield here we go again sees acres leads them in carries uh henderson gets a touchdown it's actually malcolm brown getting two touchdowns. And when you see his short yardage running, I mean, goal to go with the one kind of running. Brown is probably the best of the three. That's so, the guy. Yeah. I mean, this is the picture, folks. It's not going to change no matter how much we will it. Now we've come out of the pie. Okay, Akers is going to get more work, which means, I mean, certainly next week, we're not starting any Rams running back. Starting the receivers this week, again, you think, Cup, Woods, give it to me. No, it was actually Josh Reynolds, who before the pie was emerging as the number three target here. And one that gives them a little different look, a uh, different type of uh, matchup winner and someone who can do some more things outside downfield. So we'll see if he remains a big part of the offense next week. Again, Rams, Tampa Bay cannot wait for this game. Both of these teams, I think are feeling tremendous about themselves right now. And still a lot of football left to cease. But again, we're seeing it. Like you mentioned this time of year, things start to change. Plays happen that change teams. The teams start to separate themselves. And, you know, for fantasy, hopefully we scrape out some wins, but we still savor and enjoy every Sunday together that we can. And this one was another one to remember. Bloom, we got the pail out, right? Because we're yeah. like, we get we get an hour in on the podcast and the old yeah. New Orleans Wi-Fi. We're like, bail. Yeah, get, get that water. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the water. We're floating out. now. Get the water. We get it. We get it. We got it. We're sailing to port. Are we? Oh, yeah. yeah. See? Don't crash the boat like uh, Forrest Gump did. Jump it off because he saw Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Somebody watched Forrest Gump last night because he couldn't <laughs> sleep. Uh, the Broncos are making me restless, Bloom. All right, that's a wrap for the Week 10 recap here on the Audible, as our man Chris Harp says. Make sure to do all those YouTube things. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you never miss a vid. He's Sigmund. I'm Cecil. We're the Audible. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, everybody. Stay tuned and stay frosty.